Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev, back with a quick tutorial on how you can implement a parallax image scroll in your React Native application, and we're gonna use Reanimated for that. So, follow along by creating a new application. Actually, I will use tabs based routing or file based routing from the Expo router because I just enjoy it and it's easier to set up for me. Then I will dive into that folder and run npx expo install react native reanimated. So that's what we're gonna need to make our cool animation work. And to use reanimated, bring up your Babel config and then simply add the last line here, react native reanimated plugin. As far as I know, it should be actually the last line. I don't know why exactly that is important. Um, but you're gonna do it like that. And once you got it, you can run npx expo start, or you can also run just npx expo, which will bring it up. If you're doing this in a project which you ran before, you also need to run npx expo start dash dash clear. So let me just print this out. Um, we're gonna go here. npx expo uh, start dash dash clear to clear your cache because sometimes you get problems with reanimated. So I'll just keep this here. Once you got this, you should see your simulator. Mine is actually already pretty empty. Uh, I can show you why. The reason is I deleted everything in the app folder, which I also recommend. And then we just need two files. The first file is the layout file. So this defines a simple stack navigation from Expo Router. And for our one index page, I just set the title to be an empty string. If we change that uh, to whatever test up here, that should appear here. But I don't want that because we're actually gonna do one more thing in the end. So stay around until then. So here we got it. This is our stack navigation. And then we have one index page where we currently don't see anything. Let's change that. Let's change this and let's add um, a container styling here, which I usually do. So I'm gonna say flex one in the white background and I will apply this to my view here. So styles.container. Okay, that won't change a whole lot. Uh, so bear with me. What we need now is of course, first of all, an image. And I will set our image source actually to a URI. Uh, what is this URI? I have never seen this URI. Copilot, you're interesting. Um, I don't know if I want this or not. <laughs> we will see. Uh, I will probably use a different image. Let's say I will use this image. What would it look like? I'm really curious. Sometimes I'm really curious what Copilot offers me. Um, but nope, that's the image styling that we want. Uh, okay. So, ah, it's the React Native flow. Okay, okay, but well, I actually want to use an image that fills the whole screen. So I just pick one image from Unsplash. Looks like this. So beautiful image. Okay, few things that we need to change. First of all, we need the image to cover the full width of our view. We can do this by getting our window dimensions. So we can simply destructure this into getting the width and height from dimensions, which we can import from React Native, uh, but we don't really need the height. We just need the width. And I will use this for my width here. And you know, if you would say something like this, then you can also just uh, simplify this to be only that one uh, key. Okay, we have the full uh, width, let's say um, image height should be a const because we're gonna reuse that value. So I will use image underscore height up here and I will define this to 300 and I will use it down here instead of 300. Okay, looks good. Now, what we need as well is to make this in general scrollable. So I will put a scroll view around our view here Okay, let's get it here and then I can scroll this. Okay, good start. Um, to make this even more scrollable, I will actually add a little block of some dummy text here. So I will just use really a huge height so we can scroll this page and then also a text. Yeah, why should, you, why should you understand that text comes from React Native? I've just only used it about 300 times by now. Okay, now let me show you one thing. We can scroll this page, it's cool. Um, we can scroll it out um, and everything scrolls. But the thing is, this area here, this image always stays the same height. If you know parallax scroll, usually what you see is that this part, whatever it might be, scrolls kind of above the image as if the image was like Z index minus one and this was like one. So it scrolls more on top. The reason is very simple. 
it's just that we tell this image part here to scroll out slower. So it scrolls out like this very slowly up while this actually scrolls a bit faster. And that gives the impression that actually this content is above the image. So um, let's get into that as we now need to add reanimated to our page. So what we need is to grab a scroll ref to that scroll view. And since we're using reanimated, we're not just using a default uh, ref here. And I will now disable uh, completions because this is getting annoying. Uh, we're going to use use animated ref from react native reanimated. Okay, uh, here we go. And we can close this. Actually, we can strongly type this if we want to. So we can do this in a second. Now we're going to have to change our scroll view as well to be an animated scroll view component. And animated, of course, comes from React Native reanimated as well. Actually, this comes from uh, right here. We're not destructuring our animated. Okay, now we have an animated scroll view. Nothing has really changed so far. What we need is to give our ref here. And yes, as always, <laughs> use the second argument here and pass in the scroll ref again. No real big change. Only thing is that TypeScript complains. So in that case, add the type, which is now animated dot scroll view. So now everyone should be happy. Cool. Okay. Now the interesting part begins. As you can see, nothing has changed so far. We're gonna easily get the offset of our scroll view by using a function from reanimated, which makes this really easy. So we can just get the scroll offset. And by the way, you can also listen to like the scroll events output and do this manually. This is like just um, skipping one step or one, one uh, function call. And we can use use scroll view offset. And as a reference, we need to pass in uh, our animated reference, which in our case is just the scroll ref. Now, we're able to get this scroll offset. And if you've worked with reanimated, you know that we now need to create animated styles. So let's call them image animated style. And we use use animated style for that. Use animated style from React Native reanimated. In here, we can define how the style changes um, based on a few things. So usually you return an object in here. Okay, did I make this in the wrong way? Yes. So usually we do it like this. Um, and we can at this point already attach the image style because it compiles. I'm really happy about that um, to the image. So we change this to be an array. That means we still keep the styling of the image that we had before for the uh, size. And then we also going to use our image animated style. Uh, that also complains because now we should also make the image an animated image. But once we got that, everything should be cool again. And now the actual magic happens here in our function. So what we want to do is want to transform the image now. That means we supply um, transform object here. And what I want to do is I want to translate Y. So that is what I want to change. I want to change the Y coordinates. And we don't want to do this um, uh, based on only the scroll offset. I mean, we kind of want to do it, but we want to interpolate this. So I had a great talk um, on the podcast, on the Rocket Ship podcast with Catalin Miron before on uh, interpolation. He's really the goat of this. So check it out. Basically, it means we're mapping one value to something else. We like mapping a value to a range of values. Uh, in our case, we want to use the scroll offset dot value um, is the general value. And then we're going to map this. So the input values here are um, and let, let's do this easier. Let's do because then nothing, all the things is red. So we have the input range and we have the output range. They both go from uh, one value to another, like the minimum to the maximum of that interpolation. In our case, the um, the smallest should be minus image height. Then at some point we have zero and then it should be to image height. This is like our range, our input range. But we're gonna map that now to achieve the parallax effect. Uh, actually, if I would do, copy exactly this part here, that would be interesting because then I can show you 
that kind of still works. It actually works pretty bad as you can see. So the image distorts and stuff happens that you don't really want to. All we need to update as well is on the animated scroll view, you're gonna change the scroll event. Uh, why do I not get code completion here? Scroll. Well, anyway, scroll event throttle to be 16 events. So now the whole stuff here is a lot more smooth. And you see that right now, actually nothing happens, but it's not too bad because we kind of get the parallax animation. It's kind of moved to the background now. But of course, we still want it to move a bit. So what we want to do is we want to make it move slower. And we can do this by dividing this by two. Okay, and also the image height multiplying it with 0 0.75. let say So this gives us the chance. Um, and you see, we have the first part. So it scrolls out again, which it didn't do before, but it does at half the speed of how we do it. Okay, so it looks like our view is scrolling on top of this. But at the same time, you also usually want to have some sort of scale, especially on iOS when you like over scroll, uh, when you pull down further than you can do. That's an interesting uh, thing. So what you can do is just add another style in here where we want to uh, define that we also want to scale that view. And we're going to, of course, use our interpolate function again. We're going to pass in the scroll offset value. And I will actually just copy this. Um, so we're going to use the scroll offset value. Then we will go from minus to uh, image height and cover that range. But now the output should be a di bit different. So we're going to do, um, we can do a scale of two at maximum. And for the other input values, we're going to go back to a scale of one. That means when I now scroll here, we're scaling it up until two. So you could use a different value if you think this is too big. But now it is kind of stuck up there and scales and you got the smooth scroll out from the view above. And with that, you kind of have covered the parallax image. So in most cases, this is already enough and should feel pretty good in your application. Feel free to play around with these values here, but this is pretty much all you need at this point to make the parallax scroll work. Now, one thing that I really like to add to this scenario is playing around a bit with the header and you can get this for, let's say, quite easy. So what you can do additionally is you can modify the stack from exporouter.screen just like we did our layout page and can do some options in here. It's pretty much the same like you would do with uh, React Navigation. So I can now say uh, header transparent and set this to true. Okay, this will hide the header. That usually also looks a whole lot better if you have some parallax view, it really makes it more impressive in my eyes. Um, additionally, you can pass in like a header left thing. So you might have some sort of button. I'll just add a text for now. So let's just add a text uh, back, okay? And probably the text, is it there? Yeah, it's kind of there, yeah, there it is. Uh, but we don't really see it yet. So you might want to play around with uh, some um, colors here. But what's pretty cool is that we can also specify our own header background. And that will make this, this whole idea here a lot better. Okay, so our header background will be an animated view because we want to run some styles on it. So I'm going to say style equals uh, something. Actually, it should be an array. Um, more is not required. So our header in general will have the following styling. Uh, header, let's make an object down here. And in that object, I want to just set the background color, the height, and I will uh, set a little, actually we don't really need the border with. Let's just keep it like this. Um, did we already apply the header? I don't think so. So let's put in styles.header. Okay, now we have the default header, but you notice it's kind of on top of our image. Okay, so the image is cut here. I would go until here. That means in the default case, we kind of want to make this like 
um, the opacity zero maybe, and then just fade it in while we scroll. And doing that is actually pretty easy given the scroll offset value that we have. So let's do another object. I will call this header animated style. Use animated. Why am I not getting code completion here? Um, yeah, thank you. Use animated style. And again, we do the same. We return an object and we put the header animated style as an additional property in here. So now we have two styles. And this one will now affect the opacity. So just like before with the setup, we're now not doing a transform, but we're doing opacity. So opacity, uh, opacity, and then we're gonna interpolate once again our scroll offset dot value. And we're gonna map this to from an input range to an output range, just like before. Input range will be, mm, let's say zero, and to image height divided by two. And along that input range, we wanna animate the opacity from zero to one. So we put in zero and one. That means in the starting point, we see no header is present, but while we scroll up until half the size of the image, so if the offset is half the size of the image, this will go to an opacity of one, which usually gives a pretty cool effect. Um, you just might have to time this with the image height. Maybe we're gonna do it like, um, you know, times three is, is a bad idea, uh, times 1.5 maybe. So that should make it a bit slower. Yeah, probably that's, yeah, that kind of feels not, that feels really good. Um, and that's what you really see in a lot of applications. And we got this in barely, I don't know, 20 minutes now. How long am I recording? 16, 17 minutes. So um, I was kind of shocked to not find anything specific about this because it's really that easy with reanimated to add a parallax scroll. And I think this is a common thing you see in mobile applications on details screens. So. We got it here, we can scale it, uh, we can slowly zoom, it, uh, scroll it out as if our content here would be above the image. And we now even included the header animation which fades in. By the way, if you don't need the parallax stuff, you even learn something about the header because that is also something you see in a lot of applications which start uh, faded out and then fade in the header once you scroll down that page. So. I really hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Let me know if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Maybe you have some patterns that you would really like to see. So drop a comment and of course, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you get notified about the upcoming small and also big tutorials. And I will hopefully catch you in galaxies.dev for one of the courses and of course in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.